right, I came out here to the build site this morning. This weekend is a four day weekend here in the Philippines. And even though it's Saturday, which is a normal work day, the crew took off because it was raining earlier this morning. It's kind of looking like an all day rain, but it let up for now. And it's a good time to come out when it's nice and quiet. As I come up the steps, I'll show you a panorama here of the status. This is the front of the house. I'll go ahead and walk around to the, the rear of the house here and give you a little tour of the latest status. So as far as the pouring of the concrete, over here is 100% done. They are done with the master bedroom, walk-in closet, master bath, a hallway, and my office. It's completely done all the way up to the roof truss. The architect talked to me a couple days ago and they're gonna plan on putting a roof on this side of the house because this is the single story. This is a double story over here. So they're gonna roof, roof the single story. They can start the completion work on the inside. But over here, they made a recent change. This is a restroom CR and they added a, a window here to let in some more natural light. The plumbers have been working on the pool and as I walk around, I'll show you what they've been doing. We made a significant change to the bar area here. As I w walk down in to the, the sunken bar, you know, this is the dry side to the pool bar. The, the pool bar is here. And we used to have a, um, a wall here, and this used to be earth, because this was gonna be a, a walkway into the mechanical room but I was thinking you know the bartender is going to be busy here I don't want I wouldn't want someone to be walking through here you know at eye level for the bartender just to get in the mechanical room so we decided to uh, move the door here on the other side to the breezeway and that frees us up to cover this with the concrete counter and leave this all open underneath here, kind of a recessed cavity here. Put a freezer, a wine chiller, something like that, ice maker. So those things will fit down in here. I painted a red dot everywhere I want electricity. Uh, and then as you move around, there'll be a sink here with the water heater for hot water on the sink. Outlet, outlet. It's gonna be more of a merchandiser, cooler or a chiller rather than a refrigerator. And of course the bar is here with some outlets. The ledge here uh, behind the, the larger pool was going to be a planter box. But and, and this door here in the master bedroom hallway uh, that was always there and you could walk out onto the patio from there. But I realized that anyone wanting to come to the patio from this side of the pool would have to walk around to the breezeway to come out. So I asked them if they could make this a little bit wider right there at the pool so a single person can make their way out here to the patio. Also the overhang here around the master bedroom has, has been complete and they removed the forms and that's all plumb for electricity and, and uh, ethernet. But all of these walls now are, are poured and curing. Here's a shot of looking in the master bedroom window from around the corner here. I don't want to walk in there, I've got mud all over my boots, but here's a panorama of the master bedroom. 
everything is poured and it took on that color that I was talking about in the earlier video. So that's a big window and that's going to be a sliding door. This is the master bath with a window. And then this is up the outside of my office. And this is going to be my, my bulkhead uh, fitting where I can run uh, fiber or ethernet out here and into the ground. As I come around the corner here, this is this is new since the last episode. This is the cantilever balcony for the office. This faces the front of the house, this balcony. And then inside the office here, everything is poured as well. All the way up to the roof truss. This will be the view as you come to the top of the stairs. It'll be right in front of the front door here. As you come into the entryway, be a, a window here. And then the main door is right here. And making a left, we see that they have uh, they've completed the, the powder room here. And they've got some uh, supports under there because they're starting to work on the stairway to the second floor. This will be one flight of stairs. There'll be a landing right there. You'll turn and go up another short flight of stairs to get up to the the main hallway, which is will be above me here. And then the, this hallway that's above us will run the length of the entryway all the way through to the dirty kitchen and the laundry room. There will be windows up there as well looking down onto the pool. And walking around where we started here. This is a window in the kitchen. This is the laundry room. And as I walk around We've got a window here for the dirty kitchen and then the breezeway. This this area here is open to the to the air, to the night, to the day. There's no doors here. So it's a it's a typical, you know, Caribbean or Asian breezeway, which I really like. I like the, the concept of that because you come in, you can walk in and out, not encumbered by any doors, to the pool area. And then when you turn right here, you're, you're still in the breezeway and it will go all the way down and you'll step off onto the back patio deck right here. So no door as well here. It is covered, but there's, there's no entry or exit doors on both sides of the breezeway. So you can quickly walk in if you want to use the, the uh, full CR here. This is the mechanical room where I said that we're going to move that door over here. So we can use that as a countertop area instead of someone walking back and forth there. So mechanical room. This is our electrical room. And there'll be a, uh, another staircase here which goes up, we'll go up to the second floors. And here's where our plumber has been working, taking care of all the intricacies for the pool filter and pump system. So they've got a lot of plumbing going on here. I know you guys want to hear more about, about this than just me walking around endlessly talking about the different rooms. Uh, I, I think the most important thing that I can say as far as uh, being involved with two uh, two construction projects already here in the Philippines. First one uh, was my garage about a, two miles down the mountain and I I took that uh, that construction uh, project upon myself. I managed it. I chose the architect. I chose the workers we paid them twice a week. It was a big job. It took a lot of time to manage all that. 
and it was hands-on and it gave me a lot of insight that I wouldn't have had I not had that experience with the garage I would be totally overwhelmed right now with the size of this home uh, and there are two different projects you know that I didn't really have a contractor for the garage I, I chose the uh, the worker that acted as our foreman and we chose the workers based on who we knew here the architect um, his purpose was to come up with the design of the garage and to engineer the things that I wanted there especially you know the part about not having any uh, posts inside the garage so he he wasn't as involved as my architect on this project um, we basically contracted with him to come up with the plan, periodically visit, make some adjustments when necessary. But the, uh, the other thing that he really helped with was the fact that he worked for the city and his spouse also worked for the city in the, in the um, building department. So they took that package of paperwork for the garage and, and marshaled it every step of the way, all the way through from start to finish. And, and, I mean, I can't tell you how helpful that is. If you plan on doing that paperwork yourself, I would uh, do some research before you, before you get, uh, unless you're really familiar with how that works in your city, it's always better to, to have someone in the know that can, that can help guide that process because it is a lot of paperwork, a lot of permits. Another thing that I found that, that's different from the way things were being handled here versus the garage when you uh, contract with your own crew building crew I think what you're going to find is frankly they're not as meticulous in uh, let's say their work habits involving supplies for example if they need a a can of Neltex pipe cement uh, you know, you may find that can later on half full, just laying on the ground, forgotten about. Or my favorite is the is the Teflon tape. You know, when you need Teflon tape, they buy eight or ten rolls of it, and you might find three rolls that haven't been used. It's things like that. Whereas on this on this building project, uh, where you have professional management and uh, foreman with years of experience uh, you'll you'll see that they do a just-in-time uh, delivery on everything whether it's building materials or supplies and I never not yet I have never seen any waste here because that's coming out of the architects pocket so they're very on top of that I don't see any waste of material or um, consumable supplies the foreman up here is, is on top of it. The crew gets a standard uh, break. They break at 9.30 for 15 minutes. They break at 3 o'clock for 15 minutes. And they break at noon for an hour lunch. And that's like clockwork. So when I was on the garage project, it was up to us to, again, we were there every day, just like we're here every day. But I had a lot more oversight on my shoulders on that project because I didn't have the the professional architect on site. I didn't contract with a professional architect to build the garage. I only contracted for the design of the garage. Again, uh, the s simple things just like paying the crew takes a lot of thought and uh, you have to rely on your foreman to give you those names and numbers and who was there and who wasn't, who gets paid. But with the with this home project, uh, everything is simplified. And I can't stress enough the importance of finding a good architect. And on top of that, an architect not only can do the design, but can actually carry out the construction. Because an architect that gives you design and a, a builder that they might not know who comes in and builds that structure there's a big disconnect but architect who to who designs that structure and builds it it's going to be seamless choosing an architect 
I can go into more depth about that maybe in a future video, but it's, but it's critical. Um, the way I found mine was, uh, A, is that architect local? Does he live in the city? How much experience does he have? Has he built any projects in the city? What do they look like? You know, what's his reputation? Does he have a family? How long has he lived here? Things like that can go a long way to help vet who you want to work on your project. And, uh, the, and the basic starting point is make sure they're a certified architect in the Philippines. There's a, there's a nationwide certification for architects and that's, that's, your, first, uh, that's your first way to vet you know, before you, when you start looking. But when you have something that's larger than, say, the garage, um, you, you really want that kind of professionalism um, on the job. You know, as this, as this construction kept getting bigger, as far as the walls going up, the architect has one of his representatives here every day now. So not only do I have the foreman here every day, but I've got an a, um, associate architect who manages all this. Uh, they're making inputs to the, the foreman. I see them talking uh, every day about different things, complicated things like the stairs, and things like that. I, I hope uh, some of my insight, insights can help you in some way. I'll try to put together some more uh, talking points that I pick up along this path. So thank you for watching.